Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite dude with a pep in his step, Gardner, the Linux Gamer. This episode of the Linux Gamer is, as always, brought to you by my gracious Patreon contributors, including my top tier Singularity members. So thank you to Corbinian Childman. Your support is truly humbling. This episode uh, is about uh, the Linus Tech Tips video that just went out the other day about Linux gaming. And you know what? Linus Tech Tips has been heading toward in a, in a much more Linux friendly direction, and uh, I, I couldn't approve more. And uh, I just wanted to take a minute and go through this video and um, just, you know, give my thoughts on it. So let's go ahead and do that, shall we? What if I told you that there's a way out from under the iron grip of the bloated legacy of Billy G? All right, starting out with a comedy sketch. I dig it. Comedy is always uh, where my head's at. Uh, so good on them. <laughs> comedy, you know, and and the cringier the comedy, the better, in my opinion. I don't know if you guys remember uh, this. One and two and one and No, 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 not in my gym. You work in a sweat there, huh? Yeah. With your GameCube, yeah. huh? Yeah, Look, doesn't look like it. I don't even see a bead on your forehead, do I? But, uh... Yeah, I like cringe and weird and like just crazy comedy. So I, I dig this intro quite a bit. Why are you using that voice? I can show you. Sure, but. I must warn you, it's a rabbit hole that you may never want to climb back out of. But you never explained the voice. And you can tell that he's like enjoying it too. Like they're both enjoying this and that's, that's fantastic. That's what YouTube is about in my opinion. That's why I continue to do this it's because I love doing it and I have so much fun doing it. So yeah, good on them. Okay, so you got me down here. Why don't you start by telling me why I should care about Linux? Well, it's simple really. I can say with confidence that it's the future of gaming. That's true. That's a pretty bold claim. Yeah, but there are huge companies backing it right mm -hmm. now. Google's game streaming service, Stadia, relies on Linux using Vulkan. Native Linux versions of the most popular mm -hmm. titles are all but certain. So, all right, so a couple uh, videos ago, I actually made, I actually talked about uh, Stadia and how I didn't think it would help us. But they do have a point here. And I've been, I've been kind of reconsidering my position on, on Stadia and how it will affect proper desktop Linux gaming. Um, and I think that um, probably, at the very least, Stadia will, you know, if it's popular and successful in the game design, in the game industry, uh, will probably get at least more Vulkan support out there. Um, and it'll have more Linux people working at game development companies, at the very least. Um, so perhaps we might see more um, Linux friendliness in game design companies the world over. Uh, I think that that's a good thing. Uh, and and I, I think they have a point here too, for sure. Do you remember how we had to jump through a lot of hoops in order to get our last video on Ubuntu gaming up to date enough to yeah. run games yeah. properly? Uh -huh. That that last video, <laughs> that one they did with Wendell was kind of uh, intimidating as hell. Uh, I, I have to, I was cringing when I watched that video. <laughs> as it turns out, there's actually a bunch of different distros available where that's not a problem. That's absolutely true. Wait, hold on, slow down a second. I've heard about Ubuntu before, but what's a distro? Oh, right. Uh, it's short for distribution, and Ubuntu is just one of them. Okay. Uh, you can think of it like Android. Some phones get updates faster than others, uh, or come with their own bundled apps and UI skins. The same with Linux. All right. A lot of people have made, uh, have like picked a bone about that statement. Uh, I've seen a bunch of people saying that that is wrong. However, and here's the day, this is what's really important to know. That they're not saying that Android isn't Linux. They're not saying that uh, Linux is like Android. What they're saying here is that um, very much similar to how different types of Android phones get different release cycles. Some get abandoned, some get regular updates, some only get uh, critical security updates. It's wor it works very much like that in the Linux world, where different distributions have different release cycles, different cadences for updates, uh, different, uh, like the age of the packages that are in the repository are different, uh, you know, just based on how frequently they get updated by the distribution maintainer. And um, so they're absolutely right. It's, it's like that. It's not the same thing, 
but they are completely justified in using that analogy. And I think that it's a, a very apt one, especially when you're talking to somebody who has no familiarity with desktop Linux, but who is, um, you know, familiar with this because most people, most Windows users are going to know like what a release cycle on, on an Android phone is like. Or at least they'll have a general understanding, a better understanding of it. And I think that that's a great analogy. Uh, some distros, are, on the other hand, are more elegant, and some are more customizable. Some have more features, <laughs> other place emphasis on stability, and that kind of thing. So what, if I don't like one distro and I want to choose another one, I'm going to have to learn everything again from scratch? Uh, no. Just like on Android, where you can download a new launcher, if you don't like the interface on a Linux distro, you can just download a new desktop environment. Ubuntu itself is a distro, and these days just uses a customized version of a desktop environment called GNOME. Uh, it's GNOME. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to be that guy. <laughs> Since you can run them all off of a USB drive, you can give it a test drive without even affecting your existing operating system. So like if you have Windows, it only takes a few minutes to just download the ISO and using Belina Etcher or Rufus, uh, you just create a USB drive and off you go. Just one of these. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. That's that's one of the many, many selling points of, of Linux is that it gives you so many options. You can uh, install it on your hard drive or you can run it off a USB drive and not have to worry about uh, affecting the, you know, your, your Windows installation if you have one. Um, that is such an elegant explanation, too. And I, I really appreciate this video so far. This is really good. So since it's the most popular one, that's got to be the best for gaming, right? Um, yes and no. The problem is that Ubuntu ships with old versions of all the software we're going to need. So there are some hoops to jump through in order to get the working gaming setup. Uh, with that in mind, though, there are two distros I'd like to bring attention to today. System 76 is Pop! OS and Manjaro. So I use Manjaro when I'm uh, doing my uh, Linuxy goodness on my computer. Manjaro is fantastic. Uh, and because I have a Vega card and I'm using the, uh, the open source drivers for my Vega card, uh, I'm going to be wanting to run the latest kernel and the latest versions of Mesa in order to upgrade my graphics, uh, my graphics driver stack. So uh, that's why I use Manjaro because, you know, uh, version 5.0 of the kernel came out just a couple of weeks ago. And within a couple days, um, Manjaro had the kernel available to download and install. Similarly, if you're running an NVIDIA card, you're going to be able to download the latest drivers right from your distribution maintainer. So it's going to be right in your package manager if you're using Manjaro or, or Arch or any of these Arch derivatives. Now, I haven't used Pop! OS a whole lot, um, but I have found that the packages are a little bit more up to date. Uh, if I end up doing DistroQuest again this year where I try a bunch of different Linux distros, that's going to be one that's high on my list to try. This gives us access to even more recent software. Also, how freaking cool is it that they mentioned System76 in their video? That's really awesome. I am a huge System76 fan. If you don't know, I've had uh, many great interactions with that company. Uh, you know, everybody there that works there is just, uh, they're so cool. And they're like, they're like my tribe. When I first met the people there, it felt like I was coming home. It was so great. So it's just really cool to see uh, Linus Tech Tips talking about System76. Ah. Uh. I'm a nerd. <laughs> Plus, it even has Steam pre-installed. Okay, so you're saying if I install Manjaro, I just have Steam. But if I go with Pop! OS, then I need to go to the website and download Steam, right? Uh, no, that's where the package manager comes in. The hoobity what? So, the last time they made a Linux gaming video, I did a reaction to it. And uh, I specifically called them out on one thing, and it was, don't go to their website, just download it from the package manager. And they are definitely uh, uh, hitting this, this point home here. Uh, download it from your package manager. There's no need to go to the website. That is not how we do things on, on, on Linux. Uh, so I'm really, I'm really happy that they uh, made this statement here. It's great. <laughs> is there a lot less overhead with this OS? Uh, compared to Windows, yes. It just feels so fast and light. Okay, so is there a lot less overhead on Linux than there is on Windows? The answer is emphatically, usually, yes. Okay, here's the thing. This is the thing that I found when I'm talking to any of my friends about 
uh, Linux, right? If I if I put if I sit someone down with a mouse and keyboard, and I have, you know, there, and I I have my little USB stick, and I stick it in their computer, and I boot into the Linux for the first time, and you know, this is a computer they're familiar with, and they understand, and they know how it works. Okay, this is the first thing that everybody says to me: "Wow, my mouse feels so much more responsive." Every time, dude, every single time. And it happened here too. And that's just one, uh, like, I don't know what it is about Windows. I don't know if it's like the predictive, like, uh, you know, uh, smoothing of your cursor or what, but there's something about the way your cursor reacts on Linux than, than, than compared to Windows. And it's just, it's awesome. And I've seen it time and time and time again, where people are just like, damn, that is a difference. And that is an immediately different feeling than what I'm used to. And uh, it's something that I get excited about. And I don't know why. But it's like, yes, there is less overhead. Yes, this machine is yours and you control it. You don't have to fight with your computer in order to get things done. You, can, you don't have to trick Windows into doing what you want it to do. It is your computer. You own it. You run the software on it that you want to, and there aren't background processes running that you don't want. That's fantastic, and that's one of the major selling points that I've found about Linux is that this is your computer, so have the software you want on it, right? <laughs> okay, but what if a software I want isn't even in the store? On Manjaro, you'd use the Arch user repository, which is a little easier to set up. Just enable it in Manjaro's preferred package manager, Pamac. Usually these will give you access to software that might not have a package available for your distro. For example, things like Discord, TeamViewer, or OBS. That's another thing that I appreciate about Manjaro, uh, is that you have the AUR at your disposal. The Arch user repository is freaking amazing. Um, when I left Ubuntu, I didn't know how to install like Discord or anything like that. Um, even, uh, uh, VS Code for from Microsoft. I was like, I don't know what the hell to do. I thought I had to do like a source compilation from scratch, and I was like, I really don't want to do that. I just want things to just install and work. Now there are things like uh, Code, which is an open source, non proprietary binary blob version of VS Code that are in the uh, default Manjaro repos. It was kind of a revelation for me when I. Uh, first found out about the AUR, like when I first tried using it, I was like, holy Jesus, this is why every Arch user tells you I'm an Arch user. <laughs> but I mean, Arch-based distributions are just fantastic. This is, it's so cool. I'm really happy that they're highlighting Manjaro and Pop! OS. This is, it's really cool to see. Okay, but what if it's not on either of those? Then, as a last resort, you would turn to the author's website just like on Windows. But that's not really a common problem to have, which is fortunate because it's not as easy or as clean to install something you downloaded from the internet on Linux as it is on Windows or Mac OS. Right. You'd be at the mercy of the developer having good instructions, and you'll probably need to use the terminal like shown here. Yeah. Hold on a second. You expect me to understand all this gibberish? Uh, no. In many cases, it's just a universal way to provide an easier installation experience for people until the software is available in their package manager. How is this easier? Uh, don't be intimidated. You can just copy and paste. If it's a reputable piece of software, there's little harm in it. I know a lot of people uh, say don't copy and paste from the from the web into your terminal. And you know, if you don't trust the website, or if it's like a weirdo website, I don't typically do that. But if you're if you're on like the uh, software creator's website, or if you're on GitHub, you can definitely uh, copy and paste with relative confidence. Um, the problem is if you paste in like a carriage return or some like uh, character that you can't see uh, when you're, you know, when you've selected it and copied it, then you can end up running commands you don't necessarily uh, intend to. <laughs> I don't know if the carriage return uh, character is what you want, is the one that will execute commands, but one of them will. And uh, I've ended up, I've done that before where I've like copied and pasted a command and then ended up running the command without intending to just by pasting it. Um, so sometimes you don't really want to copy and paste, but I mean, I'm not going to give them a whole lot of crap because I do it a lot. <laughs> it's not the best security practice, but, uh, you know, whatever. The terminal isn't something that needs to be scary. It's just old fashioned feeling, but think of it this way. How often have you been digging through settings, trying to figure out where that one button is? True. If you know exactly what you want your computer to do, and that includes copying these lines, it's the fastest and simplest way to go. And by the way, this even applies to Windows and Mac OS too.
that is absolutely 100% true. And I've never thought about it that way. Um, if you know what you want your computer to do, right, uh, then the, the terminal is the fastest and easiest way to do it. Even if you don't necessarily know in your head what you want your computer to do, but you have the commands right there in front of you, it is the fastest and easiest way to do it. And I've tried for years. I mean, I've been doing this channel for four years. I've tried for years to articulate exactly that sentiment. And uh, I think that they nailed it. They, they nailed it. They hit the nail on the head with this. Um, that, that's a great way of explaining it. I'm, I'm really happy with this video so far. Rocket League, Team Fortress 2, and the most newer indie games actually are straight up available on Steam for Linux without needing any compatibility layers or special setup. Mm -hmm. But if you want to install games like StarCraft 2, Overwatch, League of Legends, or if you're big on good old games or Humble Store, you'll want to use Lutris. Dude, it's so cool they're talking about Lutris on this video too. Like, uh, I'm really happy with this video so far. This is like, this is, this is a superb video as far as I'm concerned. Click on the button where it says search Lutris.net and click install. So I have to install this, DirectX 9. This is probably enough. I got a gateway, or I'm gonna go to. Need to construct more pylons. I have not enough minerals. So I've never played StarCraft 2, but uh, I mean, the fact that it just works when you uh, install it through Lutris, I mean, that's, you know, we talked about this on the podcast just uh, on Friday, uh, Raven and I. If I had like seen the Linux of today when I first started my YouTube channel, I don't know that I would recognize it. It is fantastic. Like the, how far we have come as a community is just mind blowing. Just the fact that like uh, we have Steam and we have Lutris and we have Proton and we have all of these you know, enormous games like uh, Rocket League and, and uh, you know, Sh uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider and like all these big games, Deus Ex, like City Skylines and like all these awesome games have just come to Linux. And I don't know if I would recognize the, the, uh, the Linux of today if I had seen the future when I started my channel. But it also would have given me so much hope for the future. And I've always had hope for the future. I've always known that Linux was the future of gaming. And uh, the fact that Linus Tech Tips is saying that it's the future of gaming and the fact that uh, Google is putting all of their weight behind Linux gaming with Stadia, uh, you know, and we have Valve putting all of their weight behind it. And even Epic is bringing the launcher to Linux at some point. They haven't said when, but they are. That is fantastic. I, uh, you know, we are in, we are living in the future, my friends. I am so excited about it. There are a couple of caveats when it comes to gaming on Linux. Uh, the biggest ones uh, are problems with anti-cheat software and intrusive DRM schemes and with switchable graphics like NVIDIA Optimus. Thankfully, with Valve and talks with Easy Anti-Cheat, there's some hope for a resolution on anti-cheat sometime soon. But for switchable graphics right now, Ubuntu-based distros are the only ones that provide any real support out of the box, like Pop! OS. And the workarounds for other distros aren't pretty, to say nothing of Linux's HDR support right now which is zero. Yeah, there are a couple of caveats for sure. Um, the the anti-cheat problem is a huge problem. Um, the, you know, the DRM, like they said, like you play, I, I haven't seen a you play game that works. Um, I haven't tried though, because I don't play Ubisoft games. Um, but then there's stuff like uh, Nvidia Optimus, which, you know, can be a real pain in the ass. Uh, I've never had that problem because I don't have NVIDIA Optimus cards. HDR support is is almost nil. And also 4K, while your computer can do it on Linux, 4K scaling is just kind of like a nightmare. You know, we just got GNOME 3.32, and that has scaling on Wayland, but not on Xorg. So, you know, we're going to have... We still have problems. We still have problems with like higher end stuff. But if you're not into 4K, uh, you know, if you still have 1080p screens like I do, uh, then that's not a problem at all. Um, you know, HDR support. I, I haven't upgraded my monitors yet. You know, I don't think I'm going to for a, for a little while yet. You know, especially not until we get HDR support on Linux <laughs> on the Linux desktop. Um, but yeah, I mean really like if you're just like a normal average pc gamer and you want to play games and you don't want to play them on windows linux is becoming a 
a competitive and viable option for you. You know, if you play games like CSGO or, you know, um, any of any of those like competitive games, especially games that come from Valve or Square Enix, are going to have are more likely to have Linux support. And there are a lot of games that you can play using Proton. If you go and check uh, ProtonDB.com, I believe, then they have a, a list of all the games. And if you type in your favorite, your top ten most played games on Steam, you can uh, figure out you know how effective how uh, effective Proton will be in converting you over to Linux. Uh, generally, you'll have a good time. There are some games that won't work, though. You know, we keep saying it, but it keeps turning out to be true. Getting into Linux is easier than ever, and the rapid pace at which features are equaling Windows is only going to accelerate now that Google Stadia, again, a Linux-based platform using Vulkan, is coming. And because of Proton and Stadia, NVIDIA is working overtime to match AMD's already excellent open source drivers, and wikis for Arch and Ubuntu are excellent resources for learning and troubleshooting. Plus, the Linux gaming subreddit is huge. Thanks for your contributions, you guys. You rock. Uh, and if you take all that together, I mean, it looks like we're in the middle of a renaissance. Hell yeah. It looks like we are in the middle of a renaissance for sure. Uh, I am really happy with this video. It, it is a great representation of the state of Linux gaming. Uh, and I want to give mad props to Linus Tech Tips and everybody there, uh, especially Linus. He's a great dude. I know that a couple weeks ago I had the issue of uh, one of my videos where I responded to Linus Tech Tips getting claimed. And I never said that Linus Tech Tips claimed my video. That's not what I said. Uh, you can go back and check what I was talking about. Um, and But I do want to say, you know, how awesome and how cool and how level-headed Linus was. Uh, you know, they, re they rescinded the claim on the video really quick, and I am super happy, uh, you know, that they are such cool people. And that's why I feel comfortable making this video and, uh, and just commending them for a job well done. This is a great video. It's super well-researched. I'm glad they reached out to the Linux Gaming subreddit. Um, and, you know, the Linux gaming subreddit is huge, and that's such a great uh, resource, uh, as well as, like, the Arch and, and Ubuntu wikis um, and Stack Exchange. Uh, the Stack Exchange is a great place to get help as well. Uh, but, yeah, that's going to do it for this video. I am super excited to be, uh, you know, a member of this community. I absolutely love the people that I've met, the people that I've talked to, the people who have become my friends through doing this channel. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you for being awesome. If you believe in the work that I do, you can support this show with a monthly contribution over on Patreon, or you can pick up a t-shirt. There's a link down below, but no matter what you do, whether you hit that like button or share this video with your friends, don't forget to subscribe to see more from me, The Linux Gamer. And as always, thanks for watching.